So I think this could be the most important putting video you ever watch. What if I told you there was a way that you could dramatically improve your putting performance by reducing the number of three putts you're currently having, increasing the number of one putts you're having, and on top of that, I told you that you don't have to do a whole lot of practice to benefit from this. You'd likely think that's too good to be true and I'd understand your skepticism, but I speak from experience, personal experience, of how this drill improved my putting tremendously and to a certain extent saved my putting. So heads up, putting is a simple concept. It describes the act of looking at the target rather than looking at the ball when you putt. And it's not a new idea. There's been very many famous tour players who use this technique during competition, but probably the most famous one is Jordan Spieth. Used it a lot in the early part of his career, particularly on short putts. Uh, he spoke many times in many videos about why he did this and how it benefited him. In fact, Jordan putting this way was actually a subject of one of my very earliest YouTube videos that I ever shot on the channel. Back in the day when I was in Portugal, you can go back and take a look at that video if you want. Please don't go back and watch it, it's terrible. But the basic idea behind this theory is very, very simple. If we look at a target, we're better at judging the distance we are from it and therefore judging how hard we need to hit the ball. And of course, in other sports and activities, something as simple as throwing a ball, we're never watching our hand when we throw the ball. We're looking at the far target where we want the ball to get to because our brain is able to use that information in a much more positive way to tell our body how fast and far to move in order to propel the object the correct distance. When you watch the best putters, they stare at the target during their routine and barely glance at the ball for the most part. The poorer putters would tend to be the opposite. I see that all the time. Golfers staring down at the ball, making multiple practice swings, worrying about their technique, worrying about how perfectly their putter is moving. And seldom glance at the target even to give it a second thought. In fact, I've watched golfers many occasions not even look at the target, not even look at the hole before they hit their putt and then they wonder why the outcome is so bad. So this video is for you if you want to reduce the amount of conscious thought in your putting, the amount you think about your technique and free yourself up for better performance based on target orientated focus rather than stroke and mechanic orientated focus. And as I've already stated, this exercise had a very positive impact on my own putting many years ago when I was going through a time where I found it very difficult to deliver the putter freely when on the course and in, in competition. I would say I had a, a mini version, if you like, of, of the yips. I had a, a difficulty pulling the trigger. I had difficulty allowing the stroke to be free and flowy like it is in the best players. So, I know for sure that this exercise works and I've shown it to so many golfers with so many positive results that I absolutely guarantee this will improve your putting. So the way this works is simple. Place your attention on your target when you make your practice swings and then use your practice swings as real stroke rehearsals. What I mean by that is try to imagine you're actually hitting the putt whilst your focus is placed on the desired outcome, the distance you want the ball to travel. The goal is to create a very clear picture and feeling within you of exactly how hard you want to stroke the ball, you want to move the putter. What is it that you're about to step in and execute? So it's creating the strongest possible intention and a very clear idea of what you're trying to do before you step in and learn to execute that same intention. And you'll probably say to me, well, Rob, I already do that. I, I look at the target when I make my practice swings to get a feel for where I'm gonna go. Then I step into the ball and I know how far I'm gonna hit it. So I just look down and, I, and I'm gonna recreate what I did with my practice swing. And of course, that's absolutely fine if you're having good speed outcome and good control of your ball. But many of you aren't. And the reason that can happen is because the second we look down at the ball, the minute we take our eyes off that target and we look down at the ball, we begin to lose the memory. The memory of where the target is begins to decay exponentially and the longer we spend over the ball, the more of an issue that becomes. So by the time you come to hit the putt, if you've looked down at the ball for a few seconds, your ability to recall exactly where that target is, is nowhere near as good as it was when you were focused on it. So if heads up putting is so good, why isn't everybody doing it? Well, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you that actually I think most people are doing it, particularly the good putters, and I'll explain exactly what I mean in the last part of this video. But I think a lot of it's down to two things. Number one, people watch how other people putt. It's obvious, it's logical to look down at the ball. We just copy that, we carry on doing it. We don't know any different. Secondly, 
I think there's a concern and somewhat a well-meant concern from a lot of you that would say, well, if I'm not looking at the ball when I stroke or move my putter, I'm concerned that my ability to strike the ball properly will be compromised. And I get that concern, but I'm going to tell you that that, in my experience, with golfers across a huge range of handicaps, that their ability to deliver the putter in a technically proficient and functional manner really doesn't deteriorate at all. And the gain that you get from being better at controlling your speed and having more focus on your outcome far outweighs any slight reduction you might see in technique. Learning that the stroke mechanics are not the be all and end all when it comes to good putting performance could be the slice of information that you need to free yourself from the shackles of trying to make a perfect stroke. These videos you're seeing now are examples of how the path of the putter can be completely off but the face angle where the putter face points is responsible for the most part for where the ball goes. The direction the ball launches is much more about where the putter face is pointing rather than the path the club is moving on. And once you understand that you don't need perfect mechanics, looking at the hole can free up your stroke, give you the better information about where the target is and ultimately lead to better putting performance. So let me walk you through exactly how this heads up putting works and you can go and start to see the benefits for yourself straight away. Stand to the side of the ball and make practice swings looking at the target. Individual swings with a strong focus on the hole or if it's a breaking putt, you move your target to the left or the right of the hole, basically your target, your straight line target. Where do you wanna aim on a breaking putt? Just take your spot and move it to the left or the right of the hole accordingly. As you're looking at your target, place your focus on the smallest possible spot and then start to move your body and feel the putt that you're trying to hit. I want you to live it, I want you to experience it. I want you to know exactly how hard you're gonna hit this putt before you've even stepped in so that when you do step in, you know exactly how hard you're going to swing. Then step into the ball, place your putter behind the ball, check your aim one last time, then turn your head to the target again and fix your gaze back on the same spot where you were making your practice swings to. Then execute the putt with the goal of matching your original practice swing intention as closely as possible. And that's it. It's that simple. There are a couple of small variations and additions that I can talk about and I'll share a new video with you at the end of this which will help you with some of those. But essentially, that is the basics of heads up putting. It's instinctive and artistic rather than forced and mechanical. If you've already tried heads up putting and it worked for you, get down in the comments and let me and everybody else know what your experience was like. Did you make any modifications to the way that I just described it? Did you find it was successful on all putts? Maybe just on a selection of putts from a certain distance or a certain type of putt? It would be fascinating to hear from you. I'd certainly like to read those comments as I'm sure other people would too. And of course, if you've never tried this before, and you're going to give heads up putting a try for the first time you must get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts once you've tried this did it work for you do you have any other questions get down in those comments I'd love to answer them but what if you're sitting there and thinking to yourself yeah I like the sound of this Rob but I'm not sure that I'm brave enough to take my eyes off the ball when I hit it when I play on the course I think looking at the target is just a little bit too far for me to go. If I make a mess of it, I'm gonna look silly. My playing partners are gonna wonder what's going on. So for you, I say don't worry. I'm gonna share with you now exactly the way I would teach this to everybody to get 95% of the benefit of this exercise, but you're still allowed to look at the ball when you putt. So earlier I said a lot of good putters already do this without actually looking at the target when they putt. They do look at the ball. The vast majority of good putters do look at the ball when they putt. But take from this exercise the key elements in terms of creating a clear picture and intention of what you're going to do before you step in and hit the putt. So everything's gonna be the same here. We're gonna look at the target when we make our practice swings. We're gonna live it. We're gonna experience it. We're gonna know for sure exactly how hard we're gonna swing and what that putter, putting stroke is going to feel like before we walk into the ball. We step in, we set our putter behind the ball, we have one last look at the hole, and then we bring our eyes back to the ball. And the trick here is to keep the amount of time between that last look at the hole, your eyes coming back to the ball, and the putter beginning to move 
as small as possible. Guys, if you found today's video useful, I really appreciate a like because these putting videos are not very popular at all. People do not want to work on their putting for the most part. Long game is sexy, putting not so much. So if you found this useful, hitting that like button will help the video to be seen by more people and I'd certainly appreciate it if you'd consider sharing it on your own social media. There's a great podcast that speaks specifically on this subject and goes into a lot more detail about a study done by Dr. Sasho McKenzie. The podcast is by my good friend Ollie Leet and I'm going to link the description down below. If you want to learn more about this and understand the science behind it, the podcast is a really interesting listen. I'd encourage you to go and listen to it. And if you'd like to learn how to adjust your speed on faster or slower greens or uphill and downhill putts, then go and watch this video next, which takes the premise of the exercise you've learned in today's video and discusses how to adjust your speed for different greens.